Before Mark Cuban became a name known throughout the world, a lot of sacrifices were made. His life story is a classic rags to riches story, emerging from humble beginnings doing odd and filthy jobs to becoming one of the wealthiest men in the United States. Currently, he's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks and a household name as one of the investors on the TV show Shark Tank. From a computer student to a salesman to establishing independently, Cuban has passed through a lot and his story is definitely worth telling. Let's journey in depth into Mark Cuban's life and his success story, which includes living in a dumpy apartment, getting fired from several jobs to building an empire. His unglamorous life as an inspiring entrepreneur included taking no vacation time for seven years. Before we get into that though, be sure you like the video, give us the thumbs up and click the like button, subscribe, and don't forget, click that notification bell and trust me when I say, you don't want to miss the next video. Yeah. Mark Cuban is one of the wealthiest people in America with a net worth of $4.1 billion. However, getting there wasn't easy. Cuban was born in July 1958 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Russian and Romanian immigrants. His father, Norton Cuban, he worked in an automobile upholstery store and his mother, Shirley Cuban, was a homemaker. Cuban described his mother, Shirley, as someone who, with a different job or a different career goal, every other week. Cuban, along with his two younger brothers, Brian and Jeff, grew up in a Jewish middle-class household in the Pittsburgh suburb of Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. His paternal grandfather changed the name from Shabaniski to Cuban after his family immigrated from Russia through Ellis Island. Cuban, like many successful entrepreneurs, he caught the entrepreneurial bug at a very ripe age. At 12 years old, he sold garbage bags to pay for a pair of expensive basketball shoes. And some years later, he earned money by selling stamps and coins. What a pity. At age 16, Cuban took advantage of a newspaper company strike by running newspapers from Cleveland to Pittsburgh. Cuban had a bigger purpose, so he took a great risk. He took a great step, and then he chose to skip his senior year in high school and enrolled in the University of Pittsburgh. After one year at the university, he transferred to Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, where he earned extra money in college doing odd jobs, including teaching disco lessons to sorority girls for $25 an hour. Before he finished his undergraduate study, he had saved up $15,000. He thought, what do I want to do with this money? So he bought a small pub in Bloomington called Motley's. Later, he moved from college bars to theater chains and into internet startups. This made Cuban someone of a rarity and sensation. Here was a business student who was actively running a business. Cuban graduated in 1981 with his degree in business administration. Afterward, he returns to Pittsburgh, his homeland, where he launched his career in the real world with a banking job. While there, he started a newsletter and happy hour group where younger employees could talk with senior executives. However, his boss didn't like the initiative as he viewed it to be a threat to his position. And this is when Cuban knew he was no longer welcome again, so he drew a line. He knew it was time to move on. So, he moved to Dallas in 1982, where he first found work as a bartender for the Greenville Avenue Bar Alon. He worked there for a while, but his vision got wider, so he decided, I'm moving on, and he worked as a software salesman for a short period, but he was fired less than a year later after meeting with a client to procure a new business instead of opening the store. He became sober, then he started planning. He decided to be his own boss and sketched a plan to start his own consulting business. Cuban started his own company, Micro Solutions, with support from his previous customers from your business software. Micro Solutions was initially a system integrator and software reseller. He sold the startup to CompuServe in 1990 for a monstrous $6 million. His next few years were spent networking, learning as much as he could about the potential of the internet and what consumers could get from it. A few years later, he co-founded a company called AudioNet with his fellow Todd Wagner in 1995, which shortly expanded to broadcast not only the Indiana Hoosiers games, but also hundreds of sports channels and radio programs, as well as product launches and fashion shows. The site was renamed 
Broadcast.com, and it combined his three great passions, technology, sports, and business management, while filling an enormous consumer demand. In fact, Cuban was one of the real pioneers of the idea of live internet streaming. After just nine months of going public, Yahoo acquired Broadcast for $5.7 billion. Around that time, Cuban bought a Gulfstream 5 business jet for $40 million. To this day, it holds the Guinness World Record for the biggest purchase ever conducted over the internet. Cuban continued to work with Wagner in another venture, 2929 Entertainment, which provided vertically integrated production and distribution of film and video. By the year 2003, they had purchased a chain of 58 art house movie theaters. At the beginning of the millennium, Cuban becomes an influential owner and helps drive the league to a new era of modern marketing. He bought majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks for $285 million. The team was by far considered the worst in the league, but by 2011, his management turned them into NBA champions. He's also a partner in Synergy Sports Technology, a web-based basketball scouting and video delivery tool used by many NBA teams. Having appeared in various shows and movies over the years, he's also a prolific media personality. In 2012, he launched his role on the reality TV show Shark Tank, in which he invested under $20 million in more than 80 small businesses through the program. Throughout his long stint on the show, Cuban has made close to 100 deals and invested millions of dollars in startups and small business. The appearances serve a dual purpose in contributing to his net worth. As they help boost his profile in the popular imagination, attracting important and smart people into his sphere of influence. It also brings in more business for him, whether it's in the form of promising startup investments or new opportunities. In addition to his media company and basketball team, he's also an investor in everything from toilet seats, various investing websites, and sports technologies. Mark Cuban is a named inventor of 11 patent families and 23 distinct patent publications for his own inventions. He is an owner of Ice Rocket, a search engine that scours the blogosphere for content. He was a partner in Red Swoosh, a company that used peer-to-peer -peer technology to deliver rich media, including video and software, to a user's computer, and it was later acquired by another company, Akamai. Cuban was an outspoken critic of Bitcoin, and he famously called it a bubble in the summer of 2017, but he went on to invest in the cryptocurrency later the same year. This guy just knows how to operate a business. Cuban continues to expand his role in the crypto sphere, investing in tokens offered by Unicorn, an esports startup he funded, and backing the cryptocurrency fund. Mark is also known to still be investing large amounts of money in the stock market, and if his skills are as sharp there as they were in the early part of the century, there's no doubt he's making a lot of money. In the year 2019, he was ranked number 179 among the 500 richest in America, with an approximate net worth of $4.1 billion. Mark Cuban is triumphant. So what do you think about the story of Mark Cuban? What did you learn from him? And what can you say about his rough life journey to his present position? Let us know down in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, if you did, click the like button. And if there's something you want us to talk about, well, hey, let me know and leave a comment below. And I'll be more than happy to make that video. Don't forget, subscribe, click the like bell. And folks, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next mind-blowing video.